hello guys hope you all are fine uh, today i'm going to tell you that this video is about the thorax the muscles of the thorax their origin insertion their nerve supply blood supply the muscles of inspiration and expiration uh, that is the diaphragm uh, how it works in human body uh, and uh, it, uh, its clinical relevance so watch the full video till the end don't skip the video and um, if you are new on my channel so subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so you will be frequently updated by the upcoming new notifications so uh, I'm not wasting your time let continue to the video it elevates yes it elevates just like the levator scapula the muscle of the scapula it helps in uh, shoulder upward movement in combination with other muscles so uh, same like that it is called the levator posterior which is the muscle of the thorax and it helps in respiration activity it helps in inspiration <coughs> so uh, it has its origin this muscle has its insertion and it has its nerve supply and action so coming towards the origin of the levator posterior that from where, from where it arises so the uh, C7 vertebrae of the cervical spine. The transverse process, tip of the transverse process of C7 and T1 to 11 vertebrae is the origin of the levator posterum. And the insertion is the what is the insertion? Rib below. The rib below is the rib below that is the insertion. What will be the nerve supply? The nerve supply is the posterior rami of the thoracic spinal nerve. Thoracic, thoracic spinal nerve. Posterior rami of the thoracic spinal nerve is the nerve supply. And what will be its section? It raises the rib cage and helps in inspiration. So this is the levator posterior muscle. Important muscle helps in inspiration. Remember diaphragm. What is diaphragm? Diaphragm is basically it is the uh, you can say the area which is which spreads the abdomen from the chest cavity separates the abdomen from chest cavity and they, it has its own structures and abdomen has its own structure so it contains the intercostal muscles in the intercostal spaces and some innermost muscles the internal intercostal which is internal to the external intercostals and they have their activity in expiration because we are, we, uh, if you remember, we uh, previously in the previous classes we have talked about the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, and in that lecture we I have discussed you uh, or told you about the diaphragm that the abdominal muscles helps in movement of the dia diaphragm and it pushes the diaphragm upward and helps in respiration. So the diaphragm basically it's form a muscle, it is, it is formed of the ribs, costal cartilages, ribs and surrounded by the intercostal muscles and also the diaphragm muscles. Below if you have seen a structure, a soft structure of, of tissues that is called the diaphragm. So it gives shape to the dead structure, to the thorax, to the diaphragm. So diaphragm helps in inspiration. If a person inspires, then what happens? What will happen to the chest cavity? If a person inspires. If a person inspires, then what happens to the chest cavity? The rib cage will go up, move upward, and diaphragm will move downward. The rib cage will move upward, and the diaphragm will move down. Will move downward, and it's the inspiration activity of the diaphragm. So uh, remember that when you inspire. When you inspire, so your lung capacity increases. You will accumulate much oxygen inside your lung. Same example is the capacitor. Capacitance of the capacitor. What is meant by capacitance? Capacity. Capacity. The capacity of the capacitor to store charges is called capacitance. If you remember, if you see. 
where what is capacitor? What is the difference between the, the ability to store charge? The ability to store charge, the device which store charge is the capacitor. And its unit is the unit of capacitance is farad. So just like uh, you can say, just like capacitor, it has the capacity to accumulate oxygen inside the lung, and it uh, you can say it swell up. What will happen to the thorax? What will happen to the chest? The anterior posterior diameter increases. The anterior posterior diameter increases because of accumulation of oxygen inside the lungs. What happens in the expiration? If somebody expires, then what happens to the rib cage and what happens to the diaphragm? Diaphragm will move upward. Diaphragm will move upward. Upward and the rib cage will move downward. Yes, sir. So the person will expire. Now coming towards the other muscle that is called the serratus posterior superior. Serratus posterior superior. You are you are getting me. It has its own bone or remember this is also muscle of inspiration. This is the muscle of inspiration. And it has its own origin, insertion, nerve supply, and action. So what will be its uh, origin? The origin is lower cervical Lower cervical what? Spines are process. The lower cervical and upper thoracic spines is its origin. And the insertion is upper ribs. Upper ribs. Upper ribs is insertion. So it is opposite to that of the levator posterior. Because the action is the action is same. Inspiration. But the muscle is different. That is levator and that is serratus, posterior superior. So its insertion is upper rib, and the nerve supply is the intercostal nerves. What is the action of the uh, serratus posterior superior? It raises the ribcage and helps in inspiration. Now coming towards the third muscle of the thorax, that is the Serratus posterior inferior. So one is superior, the other is inferior. So there is a much difference between the two. Superior have its activity, as the name indicated, serratus posterior superior. It will move the, uh, you can say it helps in its uh, inspiration, as I have already told you. And the serratus posterior inferior, its origin is from its origin is upper lumbar. No, origin is upper lumbar and lower thoracic spines is its origin. And the insertion is where is its insertion? Lower lumbar. Lower insertion. The nerve supply is the same intercostal nerve, and the action is it helps in expiration and it lowers the. It depresses and therefore it is the muscle of expiration. It is muscle of the expiration. Now coming towards uh, the clinical anatomy, the clinical anatomy of the thorax, that what happens to the internal thoracic artery if there is uh, injury. If someone presenting you with chest pain, that is you can say, uh, if someone has arteriosclerosis inside the coronary artery of the heart and coronary artery is the itself artery of the heart which supply nutrition or blood to the heart. If it is occluded, if it is occluded, what, it, what does it mean? Occlusion means if there is blockage, if there is accumulation of cholesterol or fats deposition inside. So what happens? There will be increased blood pressure inside the coronary artery and it will raise the blood pressure and the cardiac output, you can say the cardiac pressure from the atrium and the ventricular contraction. So it will pump more blood but it can't pass it so the, the, the heart will absorb much load so the heart will be overloaded. So in that scenario if there is insufficiency of blood to the specific organ or to the specific tissue then what happens? A person will feel pain and there are certain episodes of you can say the cardiac pain, if somebody works 
so he or she feels episodic pain so there are certain drugs like NGSID that is sublingual drug and uh, you can say the Loprin the Harbesar and, uh, comes in SR90 uh, doctors prescribe that for that specifically the Zertic it is the also the uh, tablets like it helps in it helps in allergy it helps in allergic reaction as well and these are the drugs Loprin inside uh, like Zertic they helps in dilatation and also the uh, you can say the injected sublingual drug is the basic drug for the cardiac patients and it dilates the vessels. Vessels. It, 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 it enlarges the, or it increases the lumen of the vessel but for the time being not it is the you can say the proper method to resolve that plaque to resolve that arteriosclerosis plaque so what happens to the internal thoracic thoracic artery if the sorry uh, what happens to the uh, coronary artery if it is blocked then bypass then there is a method used which is called bypass so bypass mean that you are bypassing something from the artery and it can easily be then communicate with each other the artery can easily be communicated and the blood flow will occur so the bypass here is used they are uh, giving dye there are something, uh, there are certain methods which are used in this scenario is the grafting method. Yes, sir. The grafting method. The grafting method is that that uh, if there is occlusion at that side, so uh, a nerve, a, a vein, which is present in the, in the lower limb that is called as the greater saphenous vein, and it is very important vein because it helps in return of the blood from the lower limb to the right atrium of the heart because right atrium contains the deoxygenated blood and the vein contains the deoxygenated blood it carries from the upper limb as well as the lower limb through the superior and inferior vena cave of the heart so what happens they cut a section from the greater saphenous vein and they stitch the over there in the coronary artery between at the end of the artery and they stretch our anastomos there then what happens there is communication uh, communication uh, then uh, mad communication then is made between in between that graph and the coronary artery and the blood can easily be passed so this is the grafting method now coming towards the lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage of the thorax there is you can say the internal the lymphatic drainage the lymph drainage of the skin of the anterior chest the lymphatic drainage of the skin of the anterior chest it is drained into the anterior axillary nodes. There are some anterior axillary nodes, some are posterior axillary nodes. And from the posterior chest wall, drains into the posterior axillary nodes. You are clear up to here. Yes. Which are which is along the internal thoracic artery. Then the lymph drainage from the intercostal spaces where they move passes forward to the internal thoracic artery passes forward the, to the internal thoracic nodes situated along the internal thoracic artery and similarly is posterior to, to the posterior to internal and similar posterior intercostal nodes intercostal nodes yes. posterior to the posterior intercostal node anterior to the anterior intercostal and posterior to the posterior, posterior intercostal nodes so you are clear up to here that uh, what is diaphragm what are the muscles of the diaphragm and how it acts in expiration and inspiration what is lung capacity what is the uh, we, now we come, what is the origin insertion of these muscles? What, what, what are their nerve supply and what are their actions? And uh, what what is the clinical anatomy of the internal thoracic artery? If it is occluded, if there is certain injury in the uh, heart coronary artery, then what happens? There is a method used which is called grafting, and grafting is the bypass surgery. Uh, in which the vessels communicate with each other easily and then the blood flow will occur as normal. So the 
when, which is important in this scenario, is the remember that that, that is the greater saphenous vein. So part cut from the greater saphenous vein, and that is grafted over there to make and uh, compet uh, com competent flow uh, as normal as the hard flow. So I have uh, previously studied a research article and it that uh, someone presenting a heart, artificial heart and it is presented with, you can say, their walls and all the structures present over there and they will give the warranty of 10 years and it will work up to 10 years and it will, is a normal heart flow. So I think uh, in a trial version they attack some people and they implanted uh, that heart into the, the, those people and they were alive and they are happy, they were happy. So that was article about that heart, I remember that. So you tell me what is diaphragm? Any volunteer? Don't think so because it is so easy now, I think. What is diaphragm? Yes, it, it forms the aponeurosis, you can say the uh, tendon structure and it separates the cavity uh, from the abdomen. Cavity uh, yes, of course, and and it is divided into three parts, clusters, parts, which arise. It is divided into three parts, exactly, coastal part. Yes. external part, part and vertebral part excellent so there are three parts in the previous class we have studied that it has three parts the coastal part the sternal part and the vertebral part so these are the parts and we have studied in the diagram here that um, where is its origin and what is the tendon uh, insertion the central tendon where this diaphragm muscle comes and insert over the central tendon and we have already uh, already highlighted the aorta, where is the present or presence of the aorta, and uh, and have the uh, different uh, walls of the thorax. And what are the, those structures? What are their name? They are the crust, the left and the right crust, the fold-like structures. The left crust and the right crust, and the aorta and the central tendon of the diaphragm, where it comes and it inserted over there. And we can say, and uh, in the previous diagram, we have discussed discussed openly one sided by removing the by removing the ribs. So the structure will be uh, will will then highlighted and uh, then clear. So this is uh, all about the lecture on the muscles of the thorax and diaphragm. So diaphragm is also the muscle. You can say we say that the muscle that is involved in the inspiration and expiration activity. So you can also say that it is the muscle of inspiration and expiration, the diaphragm. So thorax and its associated muscles. So I think it's enough for today, and inshallah we will continue in the next class with a new topic. Yes. Clear up to here. Okay. Thank you.